Greg, Bobby and Sam enjoying their night in the open. Find out in today's episode of Home and Away at 1.15. Now the time is 12.30 and we join ITN for the lunchtime news. Hello, this is ITN. You're watching Friday's Lunchtime News. The main developments from home and abroad so far today. International outcry after ITN's revelations about Bosnian camps. One Serb leader says they must go in 30 days. We hope to ask the man in charge of Serbs in Bosnia itself if the plea will be heeded. Will the misery be ended? The murder of 15-year-old Helen Gori. Detectives arrest two young men. New hope for smokers who want to give up a nasal nicotine spray. And how far should women be prepared to go in defending themselves? Might violence provoke more violence? Singer Lindsay DePaul's giving new advice on fighting back. She joins us to discuss the rights and wrongs in today's Talking Point. Yugoslavia's president Milan Panic has ordered Serbian leaders in Bosnia to dismantle all detention camps or resign. It follows worldwide condemnation of the camps and allegations of atrocities that were shown exclusively on ITN last night. Benny Marshall's report included graphic images of how Muslim prisoners in northern Bosnia are being treated. Each day brings new evidence of the reality behind that sinister phrase, ethnic cleansing. There are some 3,000 Muslim refugees at this camp on the ceasefire line between Serbs and Croats, driven from their homes in Bosnia. And with them, they have brought evidence of the way the Serbs operate. Before they were allowed to leave, they were forced to sign documents giving up all rights to their homes and property. These pictures follow ITN's revelations about the camps in Bosnia last night and the focus on the issue in this morning's papers. The Bosnian humanitarian crisis is now at the top of everyone's public agenda. Like all Americans, I am outraged and horrified at the terrible violence shattering the lives of innocent men, women, and children in Bosnia. The aggressors and extremists pursue a policy, a vile policy of ethnic cleansing, deliberately murdering innocent civilians, driving others from their homes. In the diplomatic game, the Serbs are, of course, denying it all. Well, uh... There are a variety of reports from various quarters of Bosnia and Herzegovina, but uh, these are, as it was already shown by U.S. authorities, unsubstantiated reports. While the Bosnians are exploiting the world's sympathy to the full. Because I do believe, and I believe you believe too, that in these 1992 concentration camp is something what humanity cannot accept it. Here, with Parliament in recess, the debate hasn't taken off in quite the way it has in America, but the government is coming under attack. A Liberal Democrat delegation is due to visit the camps shortly. I think that not only this government, but the European community as a whole has been divided, has been slow, has been hesitant, has been fearful, and the result is has not really done very much. However, from the Labour Party, no enthusiasm for military intervention. Well, it is frightening what people say about the degree of military intervention they would have to be in order to simply be defensive, not to uh, achieve any particular outcome. And there has been no conviction about what people have been saying on military intervention. We have been looking at a whole series of options over the last few days. They clearly need very careful consideration. They need a good deal of consultation with our allies. I think there's nothing more I can say about that at the moment, but clearly everyone who saw that would have been disturbed by it. It was a very disturbing report. And with the daily tales of human rights abuses comes daily evidence of the ferocity of the fighting in Bosnia. Pictures like these will reinforce the views of governments who are reluctant to risk their troop lives. ITM was invited to visit the camps by the leader of Bosnia's Serbs, Dr. Radovan Karadic. He's in the Serbian capital, Belgrade, now. Dr. Karadic, the Serb president of Yugoslavia, Mr. Panic, has said that he's ordering you to shut camps like Omaska and Trinopoli within 30 days. Can you do that? I can do that even within two days if Muslim side accepts our proposal of exchange of war prisoners on the type all to all. We have or offered many times to Muslim side that kind of change and they didn't accept. 
So what you're saying is it's most unlikely that this will happen? No, if they don't accept, we will quit those uh, uh, prison, prisons. This, uh, these are really not camps, these are prisons. But anyway, we will quit them, we will release all of those people, no matter they are war prisoners, and no matter they are going to attack us again. Now, you know the outcry that there has been following ITN's reports. We couldn't see all of the camp in Omaska. You say the people there in the camps running them are undisciplined. Therefore, would you agree now to go back to that particular camp with our reporter Penny Marshall so that we can see everything there with you guiding us round? Yes, absolutely. I would like to join you there because I would see what people is disobedient and who is responsible for so uh, much, uh, so a few food that, that, that people get. I know that all people don't, don't have enough food, but still prisoners would have at least two meals a day. So that is a promise from you, or you are ready to go with our reporter straight away to that camp? Absolutely. That's my duty. That's our duty to make people uh, suffer as less as we can do. And so the challenge is taken up. You will go with us, what, within the next 24 hours? Uh, 24 hours. Uh, may, it may happen also within 24 hours. Well, we would like to hear you say very clearly, Dr. Karadzic, that you will go within 24 hours. You can go within 24 hours, and I hope I could, I could make it for myself within 24 hours, because we have big Muslim offensive in the city of Sarajevo. Very, very heavy fights today going on. Very well. The suspicion must be that where our cameras are not allowed to go, and in perhaps in other places, that terrible things are happening. The sort of allegations that have been made of beatings, executions, or whatever. Are you sure yourself that these things are not happening in camps run by Serbs, Bosnian Serbs? We have uh, 13 prisons, and uh, uh, prison of Omarska is the worst one, and we wanted British journalists to see the worst one, not to, not to see the best one, in order to help people and in order to show all of faces of this terrible civil war, which was caused by premature recognition of Bosnia and Herzegovina for what is a very responsible European community. We are ready to open any corner of this country, any prison of this country to Red Cross, uh, which was uh, invited by me this morning, and to any uh, journalist and to any international commission. Dr. Karadzic, in Belgrade, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. ITN's pictures of the detention camps have been seen all over the world. The images provided the first real evidence of brutality towards prisoners in the former Yugoslav republics, and they provoked international outrage from overseas television commentators. This is how they were viewed on American television. Faces and bodies that hint at atrocities of the past. But this is not history, this is Bosnia. Pictures from the camps, a glimpse into genocide. It was the evidence the world had been waiting for. This was American television last night. This morning, we heard that the British news organization, ITN, had managed to get two reporters into camps in northern Bosnia and that we would be getting at least a glimpse of them. By mid-afternoon, we did, and we knew these were images that would completely change the way the world responds to what's happening in Bosnia. The ABC network showed Penny Marshall's report to a group of U.S. senators. I thought the, uh, the tapes were sickening and infuriating because we, they're eerie because, you know, we've seen these emaciated bodies before. We've seen the terror-stricken uh, eyes. Uh, we've seen the beatings. We've seen them in pictures of the Second World War. The pictures flashed around the world. The Dutch talked of concentration camps. In Muslim Turkey, they said ITN's pictures resembled Hitler's camps and brought the greatest disgrace to mankind. These are the Muslim prisoners of Omaska. These are the Muslim prisoners of Omaska. In small groups. In small groups. And the Germans said the pictures were reminiscent of World War II. 
Today's British press was unequivocal in its interpretation of the pictures, adding more pressure on the government to take action to intervene in the Yugoslav crisis. It's one of these things which, in a sense, it takes a lot of reporting, a lot of uh, r uh, pictures, a lot of graphic uh, accounts from the media to establish that this is something which public opinion should be concerned about. But I think the ball has started rolling. Whether it will continue uh, and what political effect that will have depends on a lot of things which are far beyond the media's influence. Snapshots of war capture the grim reality inside Serbian detention camps in Bosnia-Herzegovina. For now, horror stories from Bosnia dominate the headlines. They clearly have generated a response in the United States. Their long-term effect may depend on the media's ability to come up with more. Well, our reporter Penny Marshall obtained the pictures from those camps on an assignment with Ian Williams of ITN's Channel 4 News. The cameraman was James Nicholas, the sound recordist Chris Hees and the producer Andrew Braddle. Well, Penny is now in Budapest and joins us. Well, Penny, we've heard a Serb leader saying that the camp should be disbanded within 30 days. How likely do you think that is? I'm afraid, sadly, after what we saw, I, I can't say I think it's likely. It's very difficult to establish who's in control of the camps. If they're in a war zone, they're difficult to get to. And even if they were disbanded, where do these people go? We drove through village after village. Their houses have all been burnt down. It's, it's not a simple... It's not a simple way. There's no, there's no answer. But of course, Penny, it's not just the Bosnian Serbs who have camps for Bosnians, is it? I think that's right. I think that's very, very important, as Dr. Karadzic said. There are Croats and there are Serbs who are being held, and the Red Cross, the International Red Cross, have told us in very similar conditions. So I think uh, I haven't seen that, but I think we have to bear in mind that this is a, a three-sided and very complicated situation. Well, Penny, as you say, you've been speaking to the Red Cross. They have, in fact, come up with further information for you, haven't they? Yes, just to say that they, they have confirmed that the allegations that the Muslims made on our report are true, that they have some evidence that executions have been taking place, mass executions in that area, and that they've known about it for some time. And uh, all I can say is that they are, at this moment, involved in meetings to try and do and what they can and get there as soon as possible. Penny Marshall in Budapest, thank you very much. Thank you. Now, other news.